Well, hey guys, it's Andrew Bro, and in this video, I'm going to be uh, demonstrating how you can get a Ken Burns effect on images inside of Premiere Pro. Uh, so the first thing we need to do, obviously, is open up uh, Premiere Pro, get you some pictures. Um, I got these from over at Pexels.com, so they are royalty-free stock images. So shout out to them. Thank you for uh, to the photographers who posted those pictures and allowed me to use them. All right, so the first thing we need to do is get us a timeline going. So uh, right down here, I'm going to say new item and new sequence. We're going to be working with a high definition video and I'm going to choose 1080p 30. Now if you're working in a different project and you've got you know video footage that you're putting in and it's 24p or um, some other speed you're gonna want to work inside of that but if you're just keyframing the images uh, or if you're putting you know you're gonna be putting this up on uh, um, putting it up on YouTube or something like that uh, we'll just work in 1080p 30 now if you already have a project that's got video in it you're probably locked into whatever the frame rate is of that anyways so all you need to do is import your pictures and get started um, so we'll go ahead and, um, well, we'll just call this uh, Ken Burns and say OK. All right, so now we've got our 1080p screen up here. And all we need to do in order to get an image over to the timeline is just grab that image and drag it. And there we go. All right, so I'm going to go ahead and zoom in so we can actually see that. And right now it's running at just shy of five seconds. So now we can go up into the effect controls panel and now we can scrub through that picture and as we can see nothing happens on the screen it's just there. Um, but we can easily keyframe our position, our scale and rotation to add motion to this image. So the first thing that we'll, we'll go ahead and do is we'll just turn on keyframes for position, scale, and I'll go ahead and do rotation even though we're not going to be keyframing rotation on this image uh, but we will in the next one so we'll go ahead and turn on those keyframes and then we can move ahead in time let's say like right up around two seconds ish and now we can do a couple of things one we can just start moving uh, the position and the scale of this image and it'll automatically create uh, keyframes for us uh, or you can, of course, um, add or remove a keyframe that you're on top of. Uh, or like if the, um, if the image will let me grab it. There we go. If we double click over on the image, we can grab it and move it around. And then now watch when I let go. Because I've adjusted the position, it automatically drops a keyframe in for us. So go ahead and undo that. And we'll go ahead and drop in um, keyframes there for position and scale. And now what I want to do is go back to the beginning keyframes and I'm just going to go ahead and scale this down. Okay, let's make it fit the screen. So there we go. And now by hitting this little arrow here, I can go to the next keyframe. So it's going to jump forward to that keyframe. And uh, now we're zoomed in. We can double click again, kind of grab hold of this and say so we want to kind of move it right over to here and now if we go back to the beginning and play it we'll watch that picture move over time now that's a little bit choppy doesn't look really great um, the picture just moves it's it's like suddenly there and it's suddenly moving that looks a little bit choppy so what we can do here is we can click and drag to select these keyframes and right click on them Go down here to temporal inter interpolate, yeah, interpolation, and we can say ease out. And then we're going to go over to these two keyframes, and we'll do the same thing, but we're going to say ease in. And now what will happen is, when we play this back, it doesn't take off right away. It takes out a little slower, and you'll see how it kind of slow, slowly goes into its position. So it's not like moving and all of a sudden it's not. Um, now, if that is moving too fast for you, um, all you have to do is either make your position and scale uh, less, so it's not as much over time, 
uh, or add more time to it. So you can just grab these keyframes and let's say drag them out to uh, you know, four and a half seconds and now we'll see that that image moves more slowly and takes a little bit longer to get there. All right, so now let's go ahead and drop another image in and we're gonna keyframe uh, this one with um, position scale and rotation. So we just drop this right next to our, our other image. And let's go ahead and slide forward a little bit so we can see it. Uh, whoops, here we go, there we go. <clears throat> now we can see it. And uh, what we'll do is, is we'll go ahead and drop in keyframes for position, scale, and rotation. And I'm just gonna go ahead and start to <coughs> drag out the rotation. Now we can drop down um, you know, drop this down right here and it gives you the little like rotation. I mean, see, it kind of moves kind of fast. I wish it would move a little bit slower than that. Or we can just go ahead and grab it from right here and begin to move it um, up or down and we can see it move. So we'll go ahead and start where it looks like it should. Um, <clears throat> that looks pretty good right there. <clears throat> and then we'll go ahead and move forward in time Go ahead and drop in our keyframes, position, scale, and rotation. And now we'll go ahead and scale this down. Now we can obviously, this, obviously see that that picture is rotated. So now we need to go back to rotation and get this back to zero. So you do it one of two ways. Um, one, I can move it to kind of where I want to. It's not quite zero, or you could even just go in and type it in as zero. So there was where the original image was. And now uh, if we wanted to, we could change the position. Um, I'm not really crazy about, I, I think it looks great right where it's at. So I just need to select these keyframes now. Go ahead and say ease in. Grab these other keyframes, whoops. Uh, these keyframes, here we go. And tell it to ease out. There we go. So now um, if we watch this one over time, let's see what it does. And there we go. We've added some um, rotation and scale to this one. So we can go ahead and highlight these. We'll move them down in time. Now I wanted to show you something else that will happen if you do this. A lot of times you'll add images um, like this and you'll want to bump the images next to each other and then maybe put in a default transition. All right, so we'll go ahead and throw in our um, default transition by hitting Control D and we've now got a cross dissolve between these two images. Uh, but what, what I wanted to show you is that um, because of where the keyframes are, this image stops moving then we have our transition take place, and then the next picture stops mo or starts moving. But they both were at a complete stop when we did the cross dissolve, and that doesn't look very natural. So how do we fix this? Well, we can go into our, um, our image here and move these keyframes as far down as we can to the end. So now it's actually on the other side of the transition. And then we can click on this image and we can go ahead and grab a hold of these keyframes and move them to the opposite side of the transition. So now when we play this back, the images have the tran the transition happens while both images are moving. And sometimes I like to go even a little bit further beyond the transition. And I believe the only way to do that is if I grab a hold of um, this image and actually trim it just a little bit. So we'll go ahead and trim this one down and we'll actually trim this one the opposite way. We'll ripple delete and go ahead and add that transition in. And now they're gonna both continue to be moving at the same time while that transition happens. And it's, it's even a little bit before that ease in and ease out is happening. And that just looks way more natural. So that is the simplest way to uh, get the Ken Burns effect inside of Adobe Premiere Pro. Um, have fun playing around with that and would love to see what you guys create. Take care. We'll see you guys next time. Bye-bye.